Hello. Today we will be building a view container. A view container is just like a vstack and hstack in where we will allow the user to type in any number of views. And inside of our container, we will parse them and render them accordingly and distribute them. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to add special treatment for some views so we don't add the decoration that's inside of the container. And we will separate the other photos that are going to be in our container into different categories that the user can set through a simple menu. Okay, let's begin by changing our model. So right now we have a journal. This journal has images. We're going to change this. Now, this is what we're going to use to build our new container where each of the images can be in a section and that's how we're going to separate them into different sections in the in the journal entry. Well, let's actually not make this so evident. Let's call it category. In the journal entry when we're saving, that we have to change what we're doing. Now, before moving on to our container, let's work on a view so we can add those. And we have the image, right? So here is where we're gonna, when the user, and in this step gesture, we're gonna tell our view model what we did. So So here we have a method where when the user taps the image, we're going to allow them to edit it, meaning we're going to send them to a new view, creating a view model. Our view model, this journal entry view model, will create that new view model so the view knows it has to present it. Our review model needs a published part to tell this to the view. two variables here we're gonna have one variable one is for the category and here the journal image already has a category i'm gonna use it and here when we save it it's when we call on edit page. so we mutate it and then pass it back well, there's one more thing I forgot. We need to tell the view that now it's okay to stop presenting. We do that by making the editor view model new again. Now let's create the view that's going to use this.
we can do another improvement here since we are not going to be um saving this in a special view model or anything i'm not going to create an autocomplete like you see for example tags let's create a grid with buttons with the categories that have already been saved Why are we asking the journal service? Because they want to know every single category that has been created for every image. It doesn't matter if it's just in this journal or in other ones. So we get them from all the journals, we get the images, we use a compact map for the only the ones that have an existing category and that's how we get it. And continue building, let's go to our view. What we're gonna have is a grid with all of these buttons. This made me realize that we all have an issue here given that ID. It's not just a flat map. We also have to make it a set. Since we don't want to return a repeated amount, a duplicated category. There. And that will get rid of the duplicate since you know more than one image can have the same category. But we just want a list of categories that doesn't duplicate we don't want to show multiple times the same category in this view Let's try it out. Okay, we have our our app here. Thanks. So let's get a new end. Up some photos. And let's stop on one. The image category. Hours. Oh, I did another button actually. Not that.
flowers, whatever, save. Back here, like our flowers already selected. Here's already tapped. And we can add it for others. And that's it. So now that we're ready, we have each of our photos. We have the ability to categorize them. Let me add a bunch more photos. And I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. This is all of the photos we have selected. So as you can see, we have a bunch of different images from uh, food, cats, a bunch of stuff, right? Um, landscapes, but we need different um, images. Even when I select it and I add a category. We have three categories. However, this is not the best way to see it. We cannot see sections and I could add them here, but instead we're gonna have some fun. So in our entry view, right now we have the photos content. This is pretty much what we have. We're gonna remove it. And what's going to be our photos content? So we do have the loading state and whatever. But then when we have the photos, we have a scroll view with a vista. We want something more uh, custom. It's going to be a view, but it's going to do as if it was a container. gonna be a normal view it's gonna ha it's gonna be generic since we can pass a bunch of content and since we want to be like a v stack like a c stack where you just open curly braces and type in your uh, views a notation of view builder for our content so this would work and we will show the content of our entire things let's change this And for now, nothing would change. We will still have the scroll view with the photos on top, but we can do better now thanks to what was added to this version of Sweet UI. So now we can do for each, and notice that we have sub views now. We can do for each sub views in content. And here we could display each of the sub views. So add sub view in. And we're gonna add um, a little bit of decoration to each of the sub views. And let's see how this looks. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Before we do this, we, we don't want to just have all of our views here, just in a list. We want a lazy V grid. Now let's build it. So going to our tab, we see that the journal entry is empty. And it's a little bit upset, but let's do this. Putting everything here in a V stack, we do not need that. And let's move the space. Here we have the photos. 
we are getting everything here we have the two options here although in black so there's a bunch of things we have to mix first these two buttons they should be on a separate part they shouldn't be treated like photos they are just a title and the button next we do have our sections here we have foods but where are they i cannot tell them apart so we also have to add sections the first thing we're going to address is how can we set this to a part and we can do that with container values we're going to create a container value so this we can basically add a modifier for these two things to say hey exclude me from this treatment of uh, photos where you're adding a special background and a rotation also the rotation was a little bit aggressive so let's dial it down and let's create the container value first thing we make an extension from container values and we add a new entry. Next, we create an extension on the view so we can add this modifier. And we have the container value. We can read it here. If we get the container values and we can ask for this, if it is a journal photo, then we do want this to happen. If it is not, we just give it a stop view. As it is, no rotation, no nothing. In our journal entry for each of the images after the untap, this is what we're doing it. So we mark this as journal photos. The other that are uh, that don't have this modifier will be ignored. Let's build and see how this goes. There. We have our title. And we have the add photos. And, the other, and everything is here. Now let's create sections. We want to do it just like we do with list, where we add a section. And the section has a title and has content and everything. We have a header and all of that. So for that, we have to first improve our uh, view model, how we pass the images. We're going to need to switch things up a little bit since now our view model is going to pass us a, what we're going to have is an array of tuples. And the tuple is going to have a string. This is going to be the name of that category. Group by. So we're going to have the category. We're going to have a group of uh, the UI image because we do need the view model to transform the data uh, to UI images in the background and then pass it to the main thread. And then we're going to have the journal image representing this change. This is what we're going to use to then uh, connect back to the, um, to the view model for this. A lot of changes. I need to change this here. Here we're not gonna have. We're gonna have a first one for each for the sections. I have the images with categories. This is a tuple. Now the first thing in the tuple is going to be a string. That's what we're gonna be using for the identifier. Then we have the tuple with the. UI image and the journal image object. Inside that's where we're gonna have the for each, but first for each of these categories, even the new one, we're gonna have a section. Now instead of here being images, the images are in a tuple and we know that they are the first index. So this tuple in here, this one here, we have the journal image and the UI. Let's ignore this for now. I'm pretty sure that all of these errors are because of the view model. I 
Okay, so we need to fix this. As I told you, um, I be, let's ignore the what's happening in the view, and we have also an error here because we cannot do this. So we have our images, right? And we have adapted our actor here to have a tuple, right? So we have we already have everything we need here: the UI image and the journal image. Now what we need to do is we need to group them by. Unfortunately, um, array doesn't have group by. But we can create one right now. We are going to group by value that's both equatable and hashable. Why? Because we're, um, the technique that I'm going to use uses a dictionary. Uh, it's going to have a parameter which is going to be a key path. It has two values. One is the element, so um, key path of something, and that's going to be element. Element is already a type in array, and it's going to return the value that's already in the generics. And what are we going to return? We're going to return an array of tuples. We will have the value and an array of elements. So that's the declaration of our function. If you have never used that, you can get any variable in an object just using the key path. So now we have our group function. Let's use it. So we can group by and the key path. Notice we are in a tuple and what we want is the name of the category of the journal photo. Category. Optional string does is equatable and hashable, so the group by doesn't complain. Now we have our images with categories here. First the category. And then the images. And we're Still, yeah, we still get the errors in the view because we have not adapted our uh, adapt image with index. Here we want it with journal image. And we don't have to change that much. We just have to find the index for that journal image since we group by the order is not the same. We just have to find the index inside of the images with the array. And that's it. If I build all of the errors, yeah, in the view, go away. And with this, we should be good to go. Let's see, are we building here? Yep. So we can continue building our view. We have the section. Section, we already have the content inside. And section has additional um, closures that we can fill. One was for the content inside of the section, and the other one is for the header. So in the header, we're gonna do is just have a text. It's gonna have no category, it's gonna have a font. Let's build and see. Nothing is gonna change visually except the sorting of the images. And here we have the ones with no category. We do have food, books, and cats. Um, and it's not that clean, right? So we have the section with the headers, but it's not getting displayed as we want. The header is getting displayed, but we don't have the categories here that much visible. We have to deal with them inside 
of our uh, container. Here, we're already asking for the subuse, right? And that's okay. But we can ask for more. We can ask for each of the sections in our content. Keep in mind, there's also a section for the sectionless uh, items. Now we also have, you saw that I added a header for my sections. So I call that. So if the section, if the header is not empty, then I want to display that header. I'm not adding a special header for it. I'm just letting the one using my container uh, build that header however they want it. In this case, it was me using a text. Uh, with a font, but I'm not modifying anything here. And we cannot get the subuse from the content. Then we're going to get the subuse here. So we do have our lazy V grid. And here we have the section for its content. And that's it. Let's try building and see how our content looks with sections. To overview. This is our images, and we have oh, we need to add a little bit of padding there. So we do have the photos, the add photos, we have the ones without a category, we have the ones with books, cats. Move this one to cats. Back when we're not updating this right now, matter. And now we have this cat. That was all for today. You saw how easy it was to customize the subviews in our container, how to add their own style, allow the user to even define if they wanted uh, to apply that style or leave it as it is with the container values. You also saw how we can allow the user to use sections, headers, and even if we had wanted, we could also add footers so they can use our containers like they use list. All we have to do is use the add view builder so our container can be used like any other vstack and hstack hope you like this video bye